Barakatuh. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There is a verse in the Holy Quran that is repeated many times where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the disbelievers want to extinguish the light of Islam. However, Allah Almighty insists that He will spread it all over and above all religions. And the fulfillment of this happens every day worldwide, subhanAllah. We have many brothers and sisters all over the world embracing Islam day by day. Regardless of all the media misconceptions and misinformation about Islam and the bad practices and bad images and so on, and still people are still finding the truth and finding the light. It's a fulfillment. It's true. Anyone who opens his heart, he will understand that because Islam is a universal religion. It doesn't come until you forget everything, forget everyone. It doesn't work this way. He says, you will never be a true believer until you believe in all prophets and messengers, peace be upon them, starting from Adam السلام, to the last one, Muhammad If you deny any one of them, you are not a believer. You are not allowed. You have to believe in all of them. They are all prophets and messengers from the same God. God sent prophets and messengers to humanity with guidance. So you have to follow. And a Muslim will never be a Muslim until he believes in all the books revealed by God Almighty to humanity. All the holy books. You have to believe in them. If you deny any one of them, you are not a believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeated this reality in the Holy Quran and the Messenger وسلم, guided us to that. That is why believing in all the prophets and messengers is a pillar in the faith. Believing in all the book revealed by Allah Almighty, a pillar in the faith. Believing in all the angels from Allah Almighty, a pillar in the faith. You cannot just pick whatever you like. It doesn't work this way. This is a complete message. Islam came to fulfill the final installment and guidance from Allah Almighty to humanity. So Alhamdulillah, today we are having a very important occasion. And a blessed one. Which is the occasion of the memory of the birth of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Allah Almighty sending him as the final messenger to humanity. Now what is important about this is that it's not excluded from the rest of history as we have just mentioned before. It is linked with a supplication, a prayer, a dua made by Ibrahim alayhi salam 4,000 years ago from now and linked with a glad tiding from Isa alayhi salam, Jesus peace be upon him, 2,000 years from now. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he went to Mecca, he loved it a lot. And he prayed for it, and prayed for the occupant of Mecca, and prayed Allah Almighty to make people love them and come close to them, and for Allah Almighty to send sustenance from all over the world towards Mecca and so on. But among the prayer of Ibrahim alayhi salam, one very strange prayer. He prayed that Allah Almighty will send a prophet and messenger from them to guide humanity and purify it and teach them wisdom and teach them the book from Allah Almighty and purify their hearts as we said. Very strange dua from Ibrahim alayhi salam. This dua was approximately 2,500 years from the birth of the messenger sallallahu alayhi salam. Nowadays, mashallah, we make a dua and we expect it to happen after 10 minutes. Ibrahim alayhi salam, Khalilur Rahman, the most beloved person during that time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a dua. It was fulfilled 2,500 years later. Isa alayhi salam made the glad tidings approximately 600 years before. He said, I, I am giving the glad tidings of a coming prophet and messengers named Ahmed, the praised one. This glad tidings is still found in the Bible till today, subhanAllah. And it's where well, Isa alayhi salam, Jesus peace be upon him, said, I cannot tell you everything I know because you are not prepared for it. But when I go, I will pray to God to send you another comforter. That is what they say, comforter. The actual original word was paraclete. Now the translation of paraclete, 
the linguistic, in the language they said, there, there are two very closely related words, paracletes and paracletes, or something similar to that. One of them meaning they praised one, Ahmed, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second one, a converter. Both meaning fit the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam correctly. And he's saying that someone like him will come later on to tell people what he could not tell them because humanity was not ready at that time. And he's saying, until I go, he can never come. After I go, he will come to you. When he will come, he will speak whatever he hear and reveal to him. He does not speak from his own. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran about the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ He does not speak from his own. It is a revelation revealed to him. Whom does it fit ever except the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And he praised Isa alayhi wa sallam. Jesus, peace be upon him, the son of Mary, Al-Masih ibn Maryam, repeated in the Holy Quran approximately 64 times with praise. The family of Jesus, peace be upon him, is mentioned with great honor. In the Holy Quran, we have Ali Imran, a full chapter for the family of Imran, the grandfather of Jesus, peace be upon him, the father of Maryam, Mary. We have a full chapter in the Holy Quran named Mary, Maryam, alayhi salam. This is how it is linked. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the fulfillment of that glad tiding of Isa alayhi salam, Jesus peace be upon him, and the fulfillment of the dua and prayer and supplication of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Why was he sent? Allah Almighty mentioned in the Holy Quran, we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as mercy to the worlds, with S, plural world, every world. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa is mercy for them. He is mercy for all, even for the disbelievers. And the mercy of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa is comprehensive in this world and in the hereafter. Even to the disbelievers? Yes, even to the disbelievers. The disbelievers before the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa their Prophet and Messengers, when they are fed up with them, they will pray to Allah Almighty to annihilate them and Allah Almighty will respond. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say, Oh Allah Almighty, forgive my people because they do not know. Oh Allah Almighty, have mercy upon them. Forgive them. Wow. Never. When Allah Almighty sent the angels for punishment of the people of Quraysh and Taif, what do you want me to do with them? Whatever you say, I will do it now. Allah Almighty sent me just for that. Say whatever you like. Whatever punishment you see fit for them, the Messenger وسلم, said, No, I don't want them to be punished. I pray to Allah Almighty to send from their offspring people who will say, La ilaha illallah. People who will pray to Allah Almighty sincerely. <laughs> Mercy. And that is why from that time on, Allah Almighty will never take all people for a punishment. It's not going to happen anymore. Because of the mercy of the Messenger وسلم, and the dua of the Messenger. The judgment is going to be in the hereafter. No longer previous punishment in this world. The mercy of the Messenger وسلم, in the hereafter is surprisingly also for the believers and the disbelievers, subhanAllah. This is one of the surprising things about the comprehensiveness of the mercy of the Messenger وسلم. So almost all Muslims know that the Messenger وسلم, is merciful to the believers in the hereafter, true? But what about the disbelievers? Even the disbelievers will benefit from that mercy. On the Day of Judgment, people will stand waiting for judgment for a very long time. Do you know how long? Allah Almighty mentioned in the Holy Quran, the duration of 50,000 years of days earth. 50,000 waiting for judgment. Some people are fed up. They are restless. No longer having any patience. Praying, our Lord, just finish whatever it is. Even take us to hellfire. Human beings don't have that much patience. But this is already too much for anyone. What about the believers? The believers at that time, this whole duration of 50,000 years will pass on one of them like the duration of the obligatory salah. Subhanallah. You'll never feel it. It will pass very quickly. Because you loved standing in front of Allah Almighty here in this world. You enjoyed worshiping God Almighty in this world. It's going to be very easy upon you. 
people will eventually go to the prophets and messengers starting with Adam alayhi salam oh Adam you are our fathers you brought us to this world you are the father of all humanity you are the first creation of Allah Almighty of humanity Allah Almighty created you with his own hand intercede for us in front of Allah Almighty second none myself today I'm worried about myself go to somebody else they will go to each and prophet and messenger one by one until they come to the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam oh Muhammad you are the final prophet and messenger from Allah Almighty you are the best chosen prophet and messenger of Allah Almighty in his sight you were sent as mercy intercede for us the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will stand he says yes it is my turn Everybody is afraid except the Messenger Sallallahu and there is a good reason for it. Allah Almighty has already prepared him for this. Remember in Al-Isra and Mi'raj, in Al-Mi'raj he has already been there. He has seen the kingdom of Allah Almighty there. So he has a little more confidence. And he knows his closeness to Allah Almighty. So he goes to Allah Almighty and he performs sujood in front of the throne of Allah Almighty. He says, the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu says, Allah Almighty will open up for me and teach me at that moment praises that no creation of Allah Almighty has ever learned them or praised him with them. And not even the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi in this world knows about them. Allah Almighty will teach him and he'll continue to praise Allah Almighty while in the state of sujood and the closest any believer is to Allah Almighty is in which position? In the position of sujood, prostration, putting his face on the ground. If you read even the previous book before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will find when the Prophet or Messenger want to supplicate to Allah Almighty, he says, and he put his face on the ground. This is sujood. All Prophet and Messenger, even in the Torah and Bible till today. This is Jew, this is what we do. The Muslims are doing that till today. So he'll make that and he'll continue. And he will continue for God knows how long. Until eventually Allah Almighty says to him, Oh Muhammad, raise your head. You are allowed now to raise your head. And ask and you will be given and intercede and your intercession will be accepted mm -hmm. so the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam's first intercession first shafa'a and he has multiple on that day 10 or more on that day the first one is for everyone for the judgment day to actually start oh allah almighty start the accountability for people they had enough waiting for a very long time and it will start so that is the mercy of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the first part of the mercy of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hereafter, and this will be for everyone as we mentioned. Amen. Now, some surprising incidents happened during the life of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he was a young boy, Allah Almighty saved him from all the errors and mistakes and wrongdoings that were abundant among the youth in Quraysh and probably all over the world. The only time his colleagues insisted on him in attending a party or a dance place or something and they insisted and took him, pressured him to go there. Before reaching, while waiting outside, the Messenger ﷺ went to sleep. Allah Almighty caused him to sleep. And he didn't wake up until it was all over, not attending or seeing any part of it. Allah Almighty saved him. And this was the norm. And they praised him throughout that. The whole of Arabia used to praise the Messenger ﷺ before Islam well-mannered, trustworthy, and truthful in speech. What else do you want in a man? And this was his nickname by his enemy, even before Islam. They all agreed. And in the Arabs, where they have some noble characteristics, not for the sake of Allah Almighty, but for the sake of in front of people, to appear nice in front of people and noble. Among it is not to speak or say a lie. They are afraid that Arabia will say they lied. So part of it they could not. That is why even Abu Sufyan, in the very beginning, when the Messenger ﷺ was sent by Allah Almighty as a prophet and messenger, and when the Roman emperor asked him about the Messenger ﷺ, he said, I wish to lie, but I was afraid that Arabia will write that on me. He wrote, he lied and said so and so. 
I was afraid, so I couldn't. So I wanted to say bad things about him so that he will not be impressed by the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu But I could not. So I could not. Now the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, part of what happened is a very surprising uh, alliance or incident. At the age of 20 approximation, a man from Zabit, family of Zabit, a trader, came to Arabia with his merchandise. He sold it to one of the noble elite in Mecca, Al As bin Wa'il. He was a tyrant. And he kept on delaying payment to that guy from Zabit. And he kept on asking and asking and telling him, yes, tomorrow, the day after, later, I don't have now with me, come later, and so on. Hoping that he will give up and go. Because he's not in Arabia, he's a stranger. And he cannot withstand against Al As bin Wa'il, an elite. Eventually, he didn't give up, but he called for the tribes that had alliance with his tribe. Some of the tribes in Quraysh. They had alliance with his tribe, the tribe of Zabit. However, when they realized that his enemy is al As bin Wa'il, a noble in Quraysh, one of the leaders in Quraysh, they were afraid and said, no. There will be bloodshed for what? We cannot. Still, he did not give up. He withstood, he stood in front of uh, the Kaaba in Quraysh and called upon the people of Quraysh. Anyone to help a stranger here who is oppressed and injustice was done? The man to stand for him was one of the ankles of the Messenger. He spoke to Quraysh, This is a stranger here, he does not have any family, any supporter. Are we going to let him down like that? What will people say about us? So they made an alliance called Hilf al Mutayyibin or Hilf al Fudul, the alliance of the purified people or the good people or the alliance of goodness, all of this meaning. So it was a very strange alliance and one of the most, probably the most noble and honorable alliance in the history of Arabia and probably one of the noblest all over the world. The whole alliance was performed by five main tribes in, uh, in Quraysh, among others. The tribe of Bani Hashim and Bani Abdul Muttalib, both of them the family of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Bani Asad and Bani Zuhra and Bani Tayn. They made the alliance of interference for goodness Anyone who is oppressed among the people of Quraysh or someone who entered Mecca from other people, they will stand with him against the oppressor until his right is given to him, no matter what happens. So they made that pact there in front of the Kaaba, and the Messenger وسلم, was there. They made it in the house of Abdullah bin Jad'an in Mecca, near the Kaaba, and the Messenger وسلم, attended that alliance. And they went and took the money of the, people, uh, the, the person of Zubayd from al As and gave it to him. Now, in Islam, one verse is revealed, Allah Almighty is saying, and fulfill the oaths that you take, the oath of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the oath, the pact, the contracts that you make with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when you make them. The scholars say that this is referring to such contracts and oaths, alliances for goodness and cooperation that were before Islam. Because the Messenger وسلم, said that in Islam we do not need any alliances because the alliance of Islam is enough. It is the duty of every Muslim to help and support anyone who is oppressed. This is part of Islam. You have to stand for goodness and for justice. We don't need that anymore. We didn't need like tribes making alliances. All Muslims should stand with goodness and for goodness. However, any alliance that was made before Islam, in Islam we will emphasize that more and give it more strength and protect it. Islam did not come to abolish the alliances for goodness that were before Islam. Rather, to emphasize them and strengthen them. And this was the practice of the Messenger He remembered this alliance after he became a prophet and messengers and leader of whole Arabia. The Messenger said, I attended an alliance in the house of Abdullah bin Jad'an before Islam. 
If they will call me to such alliance after Islam, I will still attend. I will be part of it. Because it's an alliance for goodness, for justice. This is what Islam calls for. So even if the disbelievers are calling for an alliance for justice, we'll be there. We are ready for that. Any alliance for goodness, we are part of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran very clearly, and cooperate and help one another and support one another for righteousness and goodness. But do not help and support one another on oppression and injustice or wrongdoings. So if it is an injustice, wrongdoing, oppression, we are not part of that. This is not allowed in Islam. If it is goodness and justice and, and, and good deeds, we are ready. This is part of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to cooperate. That is why the Messenger sallallahu was part of that and he praised it greatly. Uh, final point. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has a very high rank in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty said in the Holy Quran, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ And we have raised your mentioned, O Messenger of Allah Almighty. Which is true. He's praised by more than 1.7 billion people on earth. And he is still praised by many, many of his non-believers who read about him or learned about him. Furthermore, the Messenger Wasallam's name is mentioned multiple times every day on the tongue of all his followers. In the Shahada tale, in the Adhan, inside the Iqama, inside every Salah, in Tashahud, the first Tashahud, the second Tashahud, and the invocation of the Messenger Wasallam repeatedly. And the best day to increase your saying that was in the day of Jum'ah, the day of Friday. Why is that? This is the order from Allah Almighty, not from us. Allah Almighty says, verily, Allah Almighty and His Messengers send peace and blessings or invoke His mercy upon the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. O you who believe, send peace and blessing and supplication for the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam alone. Why would Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala need or why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order us to say that to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Does he need it? Does the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam need it? After the angels are supplicating for him, does he need your supplication or mine? After Allah Almighty has mercy and blessing upon him, does he need your salah anymore? He does not. So for sure he does not need it. Who needs it? You need it. So the order from Allah Almighty for you to raise the status of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yes, but the benefit is for you. The benefit is for you. Do you have... Now, is there anything for the Messenger Wasallam in it? Yes, your prayers and supplication is part of the entitlement of the Messenger Wasallam to be in Al-Maqam Al-Mahmood or Al-Wasila, the highest place in paradise. There is a place in paradise fit for one single creation from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, one single person <laughs> only. <coughs> the Messenger وسلم, was hoping to have that. For Allah Almighty to fulfill that, he, these prayers and supplications. So does that mean that there is a favor from us upon the Messenger وسلم? No. How come? Because every time you send one supplication upon the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Almighty already returns it to you tenfold. You have no favor upon them. He has favor upon you now. You send one, you had an extra nine from Allah Almighty. As I cannot say, come Mawlai, I have favor upon you, I have prayed for you, supplicated for you. You have already got your payment multiplied ten times minimum. In the hadith of the Messenger Wasallam, furthermore, Allah Almighty will remove tens of your sins for every time you say Salah and raise you ten levels in paradise. So you get your rewards multiplied ten times plus ten times plus ten times. No favor from you upon the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in fact, you can never reach the place where you are directly having that favor upon the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because you cannot directly send your blessings from you to, Allah, to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You pray to Allah Almighty to send His blessing and mercy to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad or Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how you do it, right? It's from Allah Almighty. 
Apart from what you get also is that the angels will supplicate for Allah Almighty to have mercy and blessing upon you as long as you are sending salah upon the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How much do you need of that? It's up to you. Furthermore, there are two very great benefits from the Salah upon the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of them is in this world, the second one is in the hereafter. The biggest problem of people is their worries. They are worrying about the future, right? Worrying about family, worrying about business, worrying about income, sustenance, success, followers now on social media, whatever it is. I don't know what bother people nowadays. Huh? Huh? Work, employment, promotion, whatever it is, people are worried about it. This is probably uh, like a trademark of humanity nowadays. I don't know why, but this is humanity. Always worried. And in the hereafter, the biggest problem is your sins and wrongdoing. Yeah? You're afraid about your sins and wrongdoings. Now the Salah upon the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam protect you from these two. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the man whose whole dua and supplication is sending peace and blessing upon the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, then you will be sufficed everything that worries you and your sins will be forgiven for you. Subhanallah. All your worries in this world, all the problems in the hereafter, suffice. That is why some scholars use when they have anything that bothers them, anything that worries them, they will not make any dua except Salah upon the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until Allah Almighty removes them and says, I don't need anything else. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam already said, Allah Almighty already said, nothing. So they continue to that. Final thing and probably also one of the most important thing is a reward that is in the hereafter exclusive to those who increase salah upon the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the closest to me in the hereafter and the biggest uh, friend of mine or allies of mine and in the hereafter are those who increase their salah upon me. The more you say it, the closer you get to the Messenger Sallallahu place means the higher you will be in paradise. How is that? Remember, every time you say it one time, you are raised 10 grades in paradise. So you are closer to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Want to get closer? Say it one more time, another 10. And one more time, another 10. And you continue to say that until you are close to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Almighty make us the companions of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the highest place in paradise. Ameen wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een.